Hello and welcome to Warcraft Daily for today, the 8th of July 2013. And today's news, really all we have is the Legendary Cloak effect and the blue tweets. So the Legendary Cloak looks pretty cool and some of the tweets are rather yeah, pretty good. So the first thing is the Legendary Cloak. Now, as you know, we get all these different Legendary Cloaks and I've covered these so many times in the last videos. But the interesting part is the new spell effect. Now, these, um, the only people that seem to have these up are M MMO Champion, and I've got to say, they look pretty awesome. So, I'm just going to look through the three of them that we have here. Now, the first one is for DPS, and you kind of get these, like, pretty cool, like, jade wing thingies that appear above your cloak. I think that's pretty cool. I think the healer one looks really awesome. You get, uh, like, a sort of phoenix. You, pe you pretty much have a phoenix, like, hovering behind your helm which is nice. For melee DPS, you get a sort of... it nearly looks like frostish, but I, I doubt it is actually frost. Still, it looks cool. And for tanks, they get the uh, the Nuzao sort of emblem thingy majig floating behind them. Overall, I think these look very cool, and a lot of people were, were worried that really, it's just a legendary cloak. I mean, okay, it might be a cool cloak, but it's still a cloak. Well, this time, you know, the cloaks have got badass effects. It definitely differentiates them from the pack and makes them feel like they are indeed a legendary item and that they're, that they're something special, which is, you know, something they were sort of lacking in the past. But now this here, it's pretty cool. Um, of course, I do need to add, as MO Champion did point out a lot, this is not an official preview. The size of them, it might not be right. Specifics might not be finished, that kind of thing. But still, let me know what you think about this, actually, because, um, yeah, I think it is uh, pretty nice. So for the tweets, now they've said that there are no cross-realm raids or guilds or anything like that, and the reason is that they want servers and guilds to mean something. I definitely agree with this, so yeah, stay classy. Now they've also said that they're happy with the current flexibility in groups. This was really about discussion about raid comps and that sort of thing, and how ten man sort of get dicked over by the fact that they actually need to think about their comp. Uh, you know, buff-wise, they need to think about their comp and that having the stuff like the drums, which is basically a soft bloodlust, having that there, it's kind of, you know, dicking in ten mans. And, you know, I'm not really sure what I think about this, because, you know, the more hardcore rating is seen to be 25, and they're the people who don't really have to worry about will they have every buff, and then the ten, you know, the ten man raids, or ten player raids, they have to worry about buffs, and if they can't get players, then they need to use a shitty version of the buff through an item, so I'm not really sure how I really feel about that. Now the next thing's about just raiding and stuff, and they said that Flex should help people get the ICC-10 feel. Now, a lot of you probably haven't played, um, or don't remember ICC-10, but it was, you know, you had ICC-10, which is pretty, you know, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't hard, it was, you know, it was very doable at the time, then 25 was a bit harder, and then of course you got into the, the uh, heroic modes, which were indeed quite hard. So, ICC-10, I felt like that was a raid that a lot of people participated in. Um, you know, there was always server pugs, there was, there was lots going on with ICC, and I think that with Flex, they, they just want to emulate that success, I suppose, with a lot of other things. Now, a lot of people's memory of ICC may be tarnished by the fact that we had it for like nearly a year or something. I think it was a fantastic instance, and actually one of the best they've ever done. But the problem was it was there for 8, 9, 10 months, which is far too long. It took quite a while for them to get Cataclysm out. Now, the next thing they said is that they're happy with the amount of raiding levels that they offer, because when you think about it now, there's LFR, there's Flex, there's 10 Normal, uh, 10 Heroic, 25 Normal, 25 Heroic. There really is something to cater to every player, and what I think will matter is the difficulty level of Flex. Will it uh, cater to that sort of friend and family style um, demographic of guild? Which I think it should, because, you know, it would give something for everybody. Now, I would argue that LFR really isn't anything for anyone, because it's not a fun experience. You know, you've... It's nothing... Okay, first, the chat is just rage. People sort of herp derp their way through absolutely everything. And in some fights that where mechanics actually matter, such as Duramu, you know, you're just... Like, you have maybe five attempts before you kill them. I think there's a lot of fundamental gameplay and just game design problems with LFR. To the point where I nearly think that it's, in some cases, broken by design, which is never something that you want in your game. So take that, Blizzard. Now the next thing they said is that in the next expansion they want to entice players into Flex and then not fundamentally change LFR. I'm all into enticing players into Flex, it means we have a larger rating population, perhaps those people will move up into Normal you know, when they feel they want more of a challenge, so I think that's pretty good. And I actually disagree with what they say about LFR, I think it needs to be fundamentally changed, whether the bosses need to be fundamentally different, 
or just something because at the minute it is, as I said earlier, broken by design. So yeah, now they said that a lot of uh, people think that distractions like, uh, that's quotes, you know, like pet battles and brawlers guild are taken away from the main game and they say that actually these are done by different teams so it doesn't matter. And, you know, given what I know about the sort of game development and how stuff like this would work, that would appear to be quite believable. They said that the Siege of Orgrimmar will not be as linear as Throne of Thunder, but will not be super non-linear. So what I'm thinking is, perhaps, I don't know, once you get into Orgrimmar, you can probably have a choice of maybe a few bosses or a slightly different route of doing things. Although at the end of the day, I do think that the start of the raid will be linear and the end will be linear, and then maybe in the middle you'll be able to deviate a little bit from the path. Now for PvP, they said that they're wary of the Guild Wars 2 model of gearing because they feel that gear should matter. In Guild Wars 2, gear doesn't really matter and it's all about skill. And uh, they also say that they are scarring gameplay um, because they're they're really they're souring to the idea of gameplay being lining everything up. Uh, to give you an example of that, as a Beast Mastery Hunter, a lot of being as good as you can be involves the precise timings and lining up of a whole bunch of different... Uh, different abilities and procs and cooldowns and stuff like that, which is it, you know, is it too spreadsheety to make fun gameplay? Possibly. So yeah, that's it for today's Warcraft Daily. Hopefully we'll be getting the Timeless Isles and Proving Grounds into the PTR soon, so I'll be able to, uh, to enjoy that. As for stuff in the main channel, I'm really not sure what to put on, so yeah, if you have, uh, if you have any suggestions, do let me know. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.